All right. Hello, everyone. We still got some people connecting to um, audio, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, wait a couple minutes and see who else shows up. Um, we had a lot of people um, register for this class, so I am excited for everybody to. Um, Hi, Darlene. <laughs> um, so I'm excited for everybody to join today. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, my name is Brandy, and I am the uh, support team lead here at Details. Um, and we do these tips and tricks every month. So I uh, thank you all for joining. Today's topic is going to be um, our kind of uh, summer school part two, which is going to entail um, creating an event from start to finish. So um, I see that there are some newer people in here, uh, maybe even some people that are still on trial. So this is going to be a great um, opportunity for you, for everyone who has you know, been here for a while and is looking for a refresh, maybe looking to see if there's anything in the site that you're not utilizing that can help you to uh, streamline your proposal process. Um, we are going to go through all of those things. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. As we're going through, I am going to go over a lot of information and I'm going to try and fit it all in in this hour and 15 minutes that we have scheduled here. Um, but possibility that we will go over. Um, as a reminder, though, these are always recorded. So uh, you are going to get a recap um, probably on Friday. Uh, for this as well. So um, as we're going through, you'll be able to go back to any of those things and review them again. And then at the end of our class today, we are also going to have kind of a Q&A. So um, I do ask that everybody keep their questions till the end. Uh, but then at the end of the class, if you guys have anything that you want to go back over or any questions about anything that we go over today, we can definitely do that as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And then let me go ahead and just get my my chat and everything still back up so I can see when people have written questions. You guys are always uh, you know welcome to go in and put your um, questions there into the chat as well. Um, I also have Avery on as well, and she is going to be kind of manning the chat there. Um, so definitely, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in there, um, and then we can uh, go over them at the end of the class as well. All right, so um, to get started on any event, we're going to go to our event list. This is going to be the screen that pops up every time you uh, get started on creating a new event. Every time you log into details, this is what you will see. And we're going to click on the new client slash event here at the top right hand corner. From there, we're going to fill out all of the information about our client. If we don't have all of the information right away when we go to go put them in here, that's perfectly fine. Um, I do recommend that if you have their email address to go ahead and put that in there um, because that will come into play a little bit later um, and we'll go over that once we get to that area. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and put some generic information about our client here into the event. And um, at the bottom, we have two different options. We can save and go directly into the event, or we can save and go to the client record. Um, for the sake of seeing everything while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and save and go to the client. What this is gonna do is it's gonna bring up our client record, which is where we're gonna fit all of the information about um, this client or any client really having to do with this event. So uh, right now, it auto-populated with that information that I filled in on the previous box. So I've got the first name and last name and email. You'll also see an area here for you to put in the role of this particular person, their title, uh, phone numbers, and then, of course, their mailing address here. In addition, you're going to have contact notes where you can make notes about this specific contact. Um, for each contact that you have in here, you are going to have a specific contact note section. So anything that I put in here is going to specifically be about the bride herself. Same thing if I go down here to my contact list and I add a contact, 
And let's say I'm going to go ahead, always make sure to save. We're going to go ahead and create that new contact here. And in this case, um, this is going to be my groom. And again, any notes that I put here are going to specifically be about the groom. So uh, maybe that's something like the groom is allergic to a specific flower or um, the bride is really looking to incorporate things from her mother who has passed. Um, things like that, little notes about the specific client, we can go ahead and put those there. You'll also have an area for you to put in uh, the client's photos. If you want to grab a photo of them and put that in here uh, for yourself and for your staff, you can certainly do that as well. All of this information, though, is going to be internal. Um, next, we're going to go to our log notes and events, which is going to be in the upper left hand corner here. And on this page, um, we're going to be able to go ahead and log activities with the client. So whether that's that, you know, they call to schedule an appointment, you sent them an email uh, talking about, you know, their upcoming appointment, or maybe it's the first look where you sat down and you talked about, um, you know, anything that might need to be changed right before the event or uh, your first interaction where we're talking about color scheme, what flowers they like, the theme that they're going for. Um, so any of those interactions, you're going to go ahead and log here on the activity log. So I'm just going to go ahead and put our first meeting. I can put in the date here. And then, of course, the time. You'll see these date and time fields periodically throughout the software, and uh, they're going to be pretty self-explanatory where you click into it. You'll select either your date or your time, and then you can click back out of the box. In the representative area is where you're going to be able to select which team member had this interaction. The team members that are showing up are going to be the ones that you have in your account as an authorized user. If you're not familiar with authorized users, it's not really something we're going to go over today, but um, you can go to your main menu under settings and authorized users to add additional uh, users that you want, want to have access to the site. Um, and then, of course, you can go ahead and put in that status. So maybe uh, it was sent follow up email. And then my activity details are we talked about the color theme, favorite flowers, personal items to include. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that entry. All logged activity are going to show here in the logged activity area. So we'll have a running list uh, as the event goes on and as we have new interactions with this client. Below that, we're going to have our client notes. So this is going to be more so of a joint client notes. Um, maybe, you know, how they met, um, anything that you think might help to build rapport on future interactions that you have with this client would be a great thing to put here. Um, but Overall, it's just a general area for you to put client notes. In the bottom right hand corner, we're going to have our client events. So uh, earlier we clicked on that new client slash event. So it automatically created an event for me here. Um, so that's going to be the no name. But if at any point I need to add an additional event on here, maybe it's the rehearsal dinner, the anniversary party a year later, um, or anything like that, I can go ahead and create a new event in this area as well. That way I don't have to recreate my client log. Um, I'll just add new events right on there. So for now, we're going to go into the one that says no name. And that is going to take us right into the event. The very first page that we're going to come to is going to be called the details page. Um, this page is going to be primarily used for information about times, locations, uh, other vendors that might be working the event with you, things like that. So <clears throat> on this page, I always like to start in the upper left hand corner with my event name. This I'm going to generically name the Jones Wedding. If they were referred to you by somebody, um, you can add that information here. And this doesn't necessarily need to be like a person or a place or anything like that. It can be something as simple as they found us on Google or, um, 
you know, they found us on a comparison site or something like that. Um, the reason for that and what's really going to uh, be a benefit for you guys and especially larger companies is that on the event list, you'll be able to pull a report of all of the events that were referred to you by a specific person or a specific venue, um, maybe Google, if we want to talk about like how much are we spending on Google ads and what portion of my marketing dollars do I need to continue to a lot to that uh, based on what kind of referrals you're getting from that platform. So um, really great way to kind of add that extra reporting information in. And then right below that, I'm going to go ahead and put in my type as wedding. Um, another thing with the event type is you can also search by that on the event list if you want to re uh, run a report on uh, all of your weddings, or maybe you do corporate events, maybe you want to do, okay, how many corporate events have I done within the month of June, I can go ahead and pull that report as well. So I always recommend putting in these uh, fields of information as much as possible. Right below that, we're going to have our event date. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a year out from today. And then I can add in my number of guests. And then in the reception area, I can mark if that's going to be plated or buffet. Um, the reason for the reception location is really going to be, you know, if it's a buffet, we're going to also know at that point that we need a buffet tablescape as well as any of the individual tables that we're going to have there. Um, so just smaller notes of information there. And then, of course, we have our event notes where you can add any notes about the event itself. Below that, we're going to have our custom properties area. This is actually uh, one of our newer features, and I find that a lot of people are not using this area, but I would highly recommend that you do. So um, in details or really just in any software that you ever use, you're going to come across an area where there's not a field for you to put that information, but it's certainly relevant to what you're doing. So something in the example is going to be like your client client's Pinterest link. Um, so especially now, and if you're doing weddings, um, you have clients and those clients are going to send you their Pinterest board. Um, and so in order for you to keep track of all of that information that your client is sending you, this is going to be a great way to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my property name as Pinterest. In your property type, this can be either a numeric field, a text field, or a URL field. Um, in this case, it's going to be a URL, but just some examples on other things you might put here. So maybe you're going to put the client's budget in here, and that's going to be a numeric field. Maybe you uh, work in multiple counties, which is something that I've run into with a couple of different customers, and you want to identify, okay, these are all of the events that are in Volusia County or, uh, you know, you can go ahead and put that in there as a text field. Um, so just some ideas there of things that you can do. So I'm going to do a URL. My value here is going to be the link itself, though. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my link, and then I can click Done. So now this area, as I continue to add more and more custom properties, is going to grow. Um, and then in the case of that Pinterest link, I now have a live link that anytime I'm working on this event, I can click in there to view their Pinterest page. Um, so just a great way to add some additional information. This is going to be internal information, so things that you and your team would need to know or want to keep track of for the event. Um, right below that is going to be our team access section. So we talked about authorized users previously. and any of your authorized users can be assigned to specific events. Um, anyone who is marked as an employee in uh, details, and that's their role, can only access events that they are assigned to. So um, you owners or managers out there, you can go ahead and give certain team members access to specific events here in the team access section. In the upper right hand corner is where we're going to find all of our important times and locations for this event. So I'm going to go in and for ceremony time, I'm going to go ahead and select that 1 p.m. My location is going to be the Hilton Oceanfront Resort. 
You'll also notice that while we're going through this page, there are a series of locations, mostly um, the free entry fields like this, that will have what's called autocomplete. So if I work with the Hilton Oceanfront Resort a lot, I do a lot of events there all the time, rather than typing Hilton Oceanfront Resort each time, I can just type in Hilton or H-I-L and it will pop up for me to select that information. And while I know that you guys are probably sitting there going, oh, well, again, it's like a couple seconds, but if we're doing hundreds and hundreds of weddings each year or hundreds and hundreds of events each year, then you have a couple seconds for each one and that's gonna really add up. So um, same thing with our cocktail start time here. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my time. And again, I can do uh, the location in the same way there. Right below that, we're going to have our important times. So we have uh, set up when that's going to be able, when you're going to be able to come and set up um, your photographer start, when we're going to be able to start breaking everything down, things like that. So same as the fields on the top there, I'm just going to click into them and uh, start adding in my times here. And uh, I can do this for each one of the different fields. Below that, we're gonna have our delivery information. So uh, you have your bouquet delivery area, and then you also have a general delivery address for anything else that needs to be um, delivered. Same thing, we're gonna click into the field, select our times here, and then we're gonna click out of the field. Same thing for our general delivery address here. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and do our uh, vendor teams down here at the bottom. So these are gonna be any other vendors that might be working the event with you. Okay, and then any of these areas here that are pre-populated. So these, these are the options that are gonna pre-populate every time you start an event. Um, if you want to change the verbiage on any of these, you can simply click into the box and change that out. Um, and then anything that doesn't have both a team type and a team name is not going to show up on the proposal. So if I don't want to use this gown store and it's not really relevant to what I'm doing, um, I can go ahead and leave team name blank and uh, that won't show up on my proposal there. So I'm going to go ahead and click that save button and that's going to save my page. When you're going through details and you're saving on the different pages or sections, things like that, you're always gonna get a green bar that comes across the top of the screen. And that's gonna let you know that everything that you've done is saved successfully. Um, if at any point you do not see that green bar, then you'll wanna just make sure to uh, save again. Um, and then of course, find out why it was that it didn't save. All right, next we're going to go ahead and go into the worksheet here. So I normally like to stop by the worksheet, uh, but we're not going to stay in here for too long because we're going to need to go get our items, recipes, and inspiration photos to start building out our arrangements. But when we create an event in details, or at least when I create an event in details, I like to go ahead and set the scene. And what I mean by that is I like to go in and get my color palette do the uh, calculations on my tables and seating. If there's anything like taxes or markup or anything that I need to specifically change for this event, then I'm going to go ahead and do that before I go in to start grabbing my items, recipes, and inspiration photos. This is just my preference though. So if anybody does that differently, that's fine as well. So I'm going to start in my color palette here. I'm going to click on the plus symbol and I am going to start grabbing my colors. Um, I'm planning on doing a simple green and white wedding, but we are going to go through all of these options so you can see exactly um, how to utilize each one. So the first area that we come to is going to be our palette. And on this page, you can drag the dropper around and select your different shades. You can also change the bar here on the right and adjust your hues. And then once I have a color that I think I really like and I want to keep, I'm going to go ahead and add that to my selection. 
From there, I can grab another color and then add to selection. So I'm going to do this for each one of the colors that I want to select. Additionally, though, we can click on our more drop down menu and go to some of these other areas. So next will be our input section. And the input section is going to be a place where you can add in different color codes. So if you're familiar with color codes like hex codes, Pantone codes, RGB codes, anything like that, um, this is where you'll be able to put those in. Um, I get a lot of people that ask about, you know, hex codes and things like that. And do you remember all of those? And the answer is no. Um, but if you're getting those photos from your Pinterest bride, I know that undoubtedly you guys have seen the color swatch ones that you can get from, um, from Pinterest that people will send you and they'll have the codes on there. So you can just add them right in. Another thing is that Pantone color word codes also work here. So for example, blush, I can put blush in and that's gonna bring up what blush is. Same thing with uh, burgundy, anything that's a color word code, you can go ahead and add that in here and it will allow you to select that color as well. Um, alpha is going to be your transparency. So um, if I want this to be more like a, a transparent burgundy, let's say, I can do a 0.5 and that's going to give me, you know, like a lighter transparent burgundy. It, this would be in the case if I was using like, like tool or something and that tool was um, like a sheer tool color, I can go ahead and put those uh, colors in there as well. All right, next is gonna be our from image. So you can upload any image here and you grab colors directly out of it. So going back to people sending you those color swatches from Pinterest um, or really just any inspiration photo, but I like to use the color swatches the best. Um, we can upload those here and then drag and drop to grab that color directly out of the photo. And then I can add that to my selection. Drag and drop again and add to selection. Next, I'm going to have the uh, suggestions. So it's going to give me suggested colors based on the color that I have here. Let me go ahead and change this color a little bit to something brighter. There we go. All right, so it's in suggestions. It's going to give you suggestions based on the color that you have here in your main color square. So uh, that's going to be complementary colors, different shades, tints, things like that. And then going down the list, you can select individual colors here. You'll just click on them and then add that to your selection. If you have um, like a complementary color palette. Maybe you selected that um, nice green here, let's say, and you wanted some complementary colors there and you find one that just looks absolutely exactly like what you're looking for. You can click on this drop down arrow here and uh, select all and that's going to add every single one of those colors to your uh, selection. In addition to that, you can create a collection. So if anyone is familiar with the collection functionality that we have in the item gallery, it's going to be the exact same thing here in our color selector. So if I wanted to make uh, a fall collection or um, you know, a burgundy collection, things like that, that I'm going to see over and over again, those trending color themes, you can make a uh, color collection here. Um, and then later on, if you want to use that same palette again, you can go into your collection and uh, grab those that way as well. Next is going to be our favorites. So any color that you want to add to your favorites, you can simply collect here in your main color square from any one of the select, uh, excuse me, the more drop down sections that we saw already. And then you'll click on that add to favorites button and it's going to add it into your favorites here. Um, there's no limit on the number of favorites that you can have. So uh, I suggest, you know, any of those colors that you're seeing over and over again to go ahead and add that to your favorite colors as well. Next, we're going to see our collection. So this is kind of what the collections look like. Um, I've got a couple of different ones in here. So I've got a fall, a pastel rainbow um, and you can add as many of those collections as you'd like 
So for any one of these collections, if I wanted to utilize that in a future event or in this current event, I would simply click on that drop down menu and I can select all from there. In our history, this is going to be the last 60 colors that we've looked at. So if you look at a color and then you're like, oh, I don't know, that's really what I want. You keep looking, you keep looking, but then you want to go back to that original color. You can come back here and uh, grab that out of your history as well. And then we have our selection. So any of the colors that you've selected throughout the different sections will show up here in your selection. So any of these colors that you don't like, you can certainly click on and then remove from selection. And then um, once we're finished, we're gonna go ahead and click that done button. And it's gonna populate those colors here. Um, once you get this onto your worksheet, if you then decide, you know, this one's a little bit too gray, I can go ahead and click the trash can in the upper right hand corner. And that's going to allow me to remove that from my color palette here. Right below that is going to be our tables and seating. So I kind of just like to get this so I know how many tables, how many center pieces, things like that, that I'm going to need. And then um, at my head table, I'm going to go ahead and have six people. And for each additional table, I want to have eight guests per table. So that's going to tell me that I need to have 25 total tables. All right. So then once I'm done with that area, I'm actually going to go ahead and just save. I'm going to save this as a new version. And in my description, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, first draft. One of the things that I always like to stress at this point is that description. So a lot of people go in here, they save versions and they just save it with no description. And I highly recommend that you always put a description, even if it's something simple. Um, I added bouquet, changed colors, things like that. Because if you get 20 versions in and then your bride says, you know, I really just want to go back to that initial first one that we did, even though we've spent five hours, you know, going back and forth between this. Um, you can come in here and say, okay, well, the date that I changed that was X date, and I can go back to that date and restore that version. So it's just going to help you to find your different versions easier. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. And speaking of versions and looking at them and being able to go back and forth, to do so, you're going to go to your options menu in the upper right hand corner and click on load version. So this is where you're going to be able to see every time this worksheet was saved. Uh, this is also an area where you're going to be able to see who it was that worked on the event and when. So if we have, let's say, five people that are in the details account creating different events, and maybe you know somebody changes something. Um, hopefully, you know nobody will change something on the incorrect event. But if that ever happens, or if anything, um, any questions arise as far as what changes were made, why were they made, who were they made by, all of that information is going to be available here in these worksheet versions. So um, importance of putting in your description and just making sure that you're saving versions. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into my resources here at the top. I'm going to go into my item gallery first. So this is where I'm going to be able to grab all of my individual items that I'm going to use to create my arrangements. So once this loads here, um, You'll notice that in your item galleries, you have a, uh, a my items and all items. You have all of our partner collections in here. Um, and then your account also came with a color collections and holiday collections uh, tiles. Um, in addition to that, you can add any other collections that you want. You can change the ones that are already there. Um, all of these are customizable. So uh, if you ever need to add a new collection, you'll go to the add new at the top right hand corner and click on new collection there. For now, though, we're just going to go ahead and grab some colors, uh, excuse me, some items, and I'm going to go into my color collections since at this point, since I've already got my color palette, I know I'm doing a green and white wedding, 
And so I'm going to look for green and white items. So in my color collections here, um, I'm first going to go ahead and go into my white collection. To grab items, there are going to be a couple of different ways that you can do this. So if you're going through and you just want to kind of easily go through all of these and individually select items, you're going to click the star in the upper right hand corner for any item that you want to add to your design board. So these are going to be the things that you want to use in your events. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab a couple of different items. Um, if you come in here and you're actually going to want to utilize a lot more than, uh, you know, just a few items here and there, I can go into my options menu, selection mode, and then I can grab multiple items at once. So I'm just going to pick a couple of random items here, but um, we'll just grab as many items as we think that we're going to use on this event. And then we're going to go down to the bottom, click more, and then add to favorites. What that's going to do is any item that I have uh, selected and already um, chosen that I want to have on my design board, it's going to move them all over to my design board at once. So that way, um, you know, I can grab multiple items at once and kind of save time going through these. If you have collections that you have created, um, be it a color collection or a theme collection or even a collection of past weddings that you've done, and you wanted to utilize all of the items that are in that collection, you would use that same selection mode here. But when you go to more again, you can select all items. Um, and that's gonna allow you to move everything in this collection at once over onto the design board. So um, that would be a great use case if it was a smaller collection, uh, things like that. All right, so I've got some white items here, and then I'm going to go ahead into my green collection, and I'm going to grab a couple of items there. Um, so I've got my spring green collection. Um, again, you guys can create new collections onto what's already existing here, um, or you can choose to utilize what we already have. Um, and we're also always adding new collections, new partners, and things like that. So um, moving down here, again, I'm just going to grab a couple of uh, the random items, and I'm going to add those onto my design board here, just to show you guys the process of we're going to be clicking that star, adding it onto our design board there on the left, whether that be from clicking the star or if we're going to be doing the selection mode. Um, but now that I have a couple of items here on my uh, design board, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my main gallery and I'm going to show you guys um, the search area. So maybe you're looking for a specific item um, or a specific color if we don't want to use the color collections or maybe it's a color that we don't have a collection for. Um, or if you're looking for specific item types, so maybe we're you know, look, wanting to look at all of the uh, floral foam, or we're looking at all of the vases and rentals to see which one is going to be best. Uh, we can go over here and use our search and filters area. So you can search by name, by type, by color, and then also by months of availability. Um, one of the things that I like to stress to people here is that like everything else, details is not magic. So these areas where it's searched by color, so you're searched by availability, the software only knows those things when you put them in. So for example, if I go into my all items here and I'm gonna just click into the first item that I see. Beautiful, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this base, for example. Um, that base is going to give me an area for me to put details. How, how many do I have in my inventory? If it's something like a, uh, a flower, something like that, it's gonna be uh, stems per bunch. And again, those are things that the system will know when you put them in. They're very important. Um, same thing with color. So I associated the color blue with this particular item. And then of course, months of availability. Um, so for anyone who is not familiar with the item gallery and going through those areas, I highly recommend that you do an audit of your item gallery to make sure that 
um, your items have colors associated with them, availability, things like that to make uh, searching easier for you. Um, all of our partner collector, collection items and items that came preloaded in the software will already be done for you though. So these are just gonna be for new items. All right, so let's say I'm gonna go ahead and search by name. I am going to be looking for uh, eucalyptus. And then I'm gonna go ahead and search and it will pull up all of my eucalyptus that I have. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get some silver and blue. And then of course, add that right onto my design board here on the left. All right, so now that we've got some items here on our design board, we're gonna go ahead and go back to our resources and we're gonna grab some recipes here from the recipe gallery. So there are a couple of different ways to make recipes in details and all of which are correct. So we're gonna go over all of them uh, during our class today. The first of which is gonna be to make your recipes uh, in the recipe gallery, whether that is something that you just set aside some time, Susie's gonna sit in details and put our recipes in and itemize them out, or if you are collecting these recipes as you go on, and maybe I'm building it for this specific event, but it's something like green and white wedding that is just gonna come up again and again, and I wanna save those in here. So um, for each one of those, I can go ahead and click on the plus new recipe here and add those in. Once I have the item in here, I can click on the star in the upper right-hand corner to add that over onto my design board. For any of the recipes that I have in here, I wanna make sure that I've saved them with all of the associated uh, items here, a description, um, anything like that. So that way, when I pull it into my worksheet, it's gonna pre-populate all of those things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a couple of different recipes here. Um, I always like to let people know that as you're going in and grabbing your items and your recipes and your inspiration photos, more is more. So if you have 20 photos that you want to use, but realistically, you're only going to use 10, go ahead and add all 20 onto your design board. The reason that I say this is it's easy for you to just drag and drop right from your design board and have things over there that you don't necessarily need or won't use than it is to say, oh, you know, I really, I needed that. I have to go back to my recipe gallery, put it on my design board, then go back to the worksheet. So um, more is more. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a couple of these different green and white wedding scapes here onto my design board. There we go. All right, so Next, um, the search filter in the recipe gallery is going to be primarily the same as it is in the item gallery. So on the left hand side, we can search by name, but we can also search for recipes that include a specific item. So maybe in this case, if I'm doing the green and white, I want to look for all of my recipes that include eucalyptus. I can go ahead and do that. Next, I can search by categories. If I want to search all of my bouquets, all my boutonnieres, things like that, I can do that as well. Search by style, search by color, and then search by months of availability. All right, so now final section in resource is going to be our inspiration gallery. This is going to be an area of strictly photos. These photos are going to be used for your recipes on the worksheet, and then it's also going to be used on the proposal to show your client what their event could look like based on what they've told you. So this is going to be a great area for you to upload those Pinterest photos that you, you know, that she sent or uh, she sent you uh, a file of full, uh, a file of photos. Sorry, um, you can go ahead and put those in here as well. So. In my case, I have already come in here. I added these two photos here at the top to my inspiration. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on that star in the upper right-hand corner. Something that you will notice is that these do not show up on the design board. So if anybody um, has questions about inspiration photos, we're gonna answer those in just a second. So for now though, note that I'm going to be adding them to my event inspiration. 
by adding the star in the upper right hand corner. So let's go ahead and go over to our worksheet and we're going to start building out this event. So we kind of talked about, um, you know, building recipes in multiple different ways and how we do that. So if you were someone who took the time to go and put those into your recipe gallery, um, then in that case, you'll be able to come in here, grab that recipe, drag and drop, and it's going to populate with all of the items that you had already listed in that recipe. We'll go ahead and add a quantity of one into that bridal bouquet and we can call it a day. Maybe you'll make some minor adjustments to your quantities. Uh, if you want to adjust any cost based on any fluctuation you might be seeing uh, that week, um, you can certainly go ahead and do that. Also, in your estimated price, uh, if you're like me, then you really just love round even numbers and 327.62 is just going to drive me nuts. So I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, 350. That way, it's going to account for my fluctuating costs. If anything changes, I've got a little bit of wiggle room there, and it's also going to be that nice rounded number. Um, next, though, if I'm using that same bridal bouquet as my toss bouquet, I can go ahead and drag and drop that right in, and then I can adjust some things. So maybe I'm going to adjust um, my brassica here. Maybe I want to remove some of the um, more expensive blooms, or I can just go ahead and um, adjust quantities and things like that. So now I've taken this exact same recipe. I've changed a couple of ingredients. Maybe we do a swap and do some less expensive blooms on some of the more expensive ones. Um, but overall, I've gotten the same recipe. I've changed it slightly. And now that's my toss bouquet. Um, so that's gonna save you a lot of time by having those pre-made recipes. So also, if you're like me though, there is no such thing as free time. So um, if we don't have the time to dedicate to sitting in and putting those recipes in there, um, what we can do and what I do recommend is probably like my favorite way of doing it is going to be build them as you go along. So if it's gonna be a green and white wedding and I have that in there and, you know, I have 10 brides that are coming in to meet me this week all for this same green and white wedding. I can go in and um, start, let's say on my maid of honor here, I'm going to click that plus symbol and I'm going to add a blank recipe. Before I go any further though, I want to utilize some of the same ingredients that I'm using in my bridal bouquet and my toss bouquet for my maid of honor. So I'm going to go to the options menu in the upper right hand corner and I'm going to click this favorite all items button. Anybody that does not know that this button is there, it's going to save your life. So click on that favorite all items and every item that you used in any recipe that's already existing on the worksheet is going to automatically move over to the design board. So now what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to take all of these items and just drag and drop them in. So that's gonna make my life easier. I don't have to go in and make sure that I'm using the same items on this bouquet and that bouquet because everything that I have used already on my existing bouquets is now over on my design board. I didn't have to go back to my resources. I didn't have to click the add ingredient and find those ingredients. So it's gonna save you a lot of time. So um, I've got a couple of ingredients in here. We're going to keep it simple for the sake of time. I'm going to click on that watermark image, though, and this box is going to pop up. So um, it's going to initially start off with your all inspiration here. But in the upper right hand corner, you're going to have your choose from. So you can choose from your event inspiration, your favorite items, which are going to be the items that you have on your design board or your favorite recipes. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do favorite recipes and I'm gonna go ahead and just select the already existing photo that I have here. And that's gonna populate right into this. From there, I can go ahead and change out all of these different quantities here. And now I've got my new made of honor bouquet. Took me, you know, maybe, a minute or two, 
and I'm going to go in and add that quantity and click out. From there, I'm going to want to add a description here. So uh, depending on the stage in the process that you are with this client, like if they haven't booked you, I wouldn't recommend 20 minutes on a description. But um, if you're going through here and you just want to give a general description of what's in the bouquet, we have a copy ingredient button here in the upper right hand corner. And that's going to copy the ingredients listed here onto your clipboard, your computer's clipboard. From there, I'm going to go ahead and paste those right into the description. So now I've got a description, so there's something there and it kind of outlines what exactly is going to be included in this, but I'm not going to spend 20 minutes on it because they haven't booked me yet and it's going to save me time. So also let's say I want to save this made up honor. So we talked about, you know, I've got several brides that are also going to be coming in for this same scheme. I didn't spend a whole bunch of time saving my recipes in the recipe gallery. I want to do it as I go for each event. So for my made up honor here, if I want to save this recipe to my gallery so that I can use it on my next green and white wedding, I can go to the options menu in the upper right hand corner here and click on new gallery recipe. What that does is it saves it into my gallery there so that next time I can just click the star add it to my design board, and then I can drag and drop to filter in all of the different items and descriptions and things that I saved already. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Going down here, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some additional um, information. So let's say my aisle decor, I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop that item right in. And again, any of these items, if you have something that is uh, an odd quantity or anything like that, you can certainly go in and adjust that to lock in your rate. What the lock means is that now, anytime that I make adjustments to this recipe, it is not going to adjust my estimated price. So for example, I'll just move this to one and we'll see that my pricing changed here slightly to that 54.40. Um, but my estimated price did not change at all. So um, if at any point though, I do want to adjust that based on my you know, actual total price, I can certainly unlock it to automatically update that. Okay. All right, so on the off chance though, that I do need something that is in my resources that I didn't add onto my design board because I wasn't thinking about more is more, I can go to this add ingredient button here at the bottom of my recipe and search for any item that I wanna use. I can search by the different types here on the left-hand side. And then I can also search by name here in my uh, filter. For any items that we want to add on there though, we can just click on them. It's gonna have this little check box in the upper right-hand corner. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna close that box. That's then going to filter in all of those items that I selected on that screen here to this particular recipe. If you make changes to a recipe and you decide, hey, you know, I really like this version better, um, I can go in and in the recipe options, I can update my gallery recipe. So this is going to update the original recipe to this new one so that next time I go into my recipe gallery, the recipe that I select is going to be the one I'm seeing here. To the contrary of that, if I made some updates and I say, you know, I really hate all of these changes that I've made, I can update from the gallery, which is going to revert back to the original saved version. Um, and then of course I can view my gallery recipe. So that way I can kind of compare and contrast maybe what the original version was versus what my changes look like now. And then of course my favorite recipe. So if it's a recipe that you made here on the worksheet that's not on the design board, but you wanna to continue to use that in other areas of my worksheet, I can go ahead and favorite that recipe. So that way on the next line that I'm gonna use that same recipe, I can just drag and drop it right in. Another great feature that's going to be um, 
more of an upselling feature is going to be our proposal suggestions. So let's just say for our table, I'm gonna just go ahead and put tablescape. All right, so for my tablescape, let's say I've got this really nice tablescape. It's got um, a lot of going on here. And maybe this one is going to be a little bit more expensive than uh, your average tablescape, let's say. And on that, that's gonna um, show me what that total is. But maybe my client wanted to see some additional options, uh, things like that. I can go in and grab another recipe here and put that in here at the bottom. So what I can do now is I've got my less expensive option here. I'm gonna go ahead and put in that quantity that I need but with the more expensive option that I think she would really like better, I'm going to go ahead and use my proposal suggestion. So this is going to allow you to add that option onto the worksheet for them to see and say, hey, if you, you know, I really like these low center pieces, but if you're looking for something a little bit more extravagant, this is an option that you can look at as well. It will show them um, you know, what's included and that recipe photo and things like that, the cost if they were going to go with that option, uh, but it's not gonna add the total into their grand total. So it's just gonna be kind of a, um, an option there. So same thing if we're doing multiple options for like your bridal bouquet, we have an option A and an option B. Uh, one would be a little bit more expensive or have different blooms or something to that effect. Um, and you can give those options to your client. So it's going to be a great way to upsell them on maybe a higher end bouquet or a higher end arrangement. Um, so if we don't give them options, they'll never pick the more expensive option. So um, same thing here, we can add in that description. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just copy the ingredients list and put that right in. All right. So now that we've got a couple of different arrangements here, I'm gonna go down and start going over um, all of my financials. So the first thing that we come to is gonna be our services section. These will be services that you will offer to your client. I always like to put the boutonniere pinning on there. Um, I've had a lot of people that are like, well, who's paying for boutonniere pinning? A lot more people than you'd think. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in there. And then um, any services though you wanna provide to that client, you can go ahead and put them here in your services section. One thing that you will always need to remember, whether this be for services, fees, labor, anything like that, you want to make sure that it's taxed accordingly. So for example, our services here are going to be taxed as a taxable service or TS. What that means is that's going to tell the system that this is a service and should therefore show up in the services line of our summary here at the bottom. So we'll see that 350 that I have here. For example, if I leave this as let's say a taxable product though, now it's gone and it's added it into my product subtotal. So um, just some things to take note there. Right below that is going to be our event staff section. So you'll have each type of team member, the number that's going to be working this event, how many hours they're estimated to work, and then the rate of pay. Um, you'll also see your tax section here. It will initially start off unchecked. Um, if you charge tax on labor, you'll want to check the box. If you do not charge tax on labor, you can go ahead and leave that uh, blank. Moving down is gonna be our fees section. So I always like to give multiple examples on labor because some people do not like the itemized version. If you are um, a business that's, that does like a, a percentage on the total products uh, for your labor, you can go ahead and add that in as a fee like I have here with our labor. I'm going to apply that to products, but in the fee section, you can apply any fee to either products, services, or labor. Um, but in this case, I'll do the product since that's what I'm doing the labor on. Then I have type is going to be either a flat amount or a percentage. So in this case, it will be a percentage. And then I'm going to do 30%. Um, just like we talked about before, I want to make sure that that tax column is set to taxable labor since this is going to be a labor. 
And then of course, down here at the bottom, we have our summary for you to review all of your different expenses. Um, on the bottom here, you can add a new section. I'm gonna use the example of a discount. So if you are giving this client a discount, you can add the discount section. You'll add a new row and then go ahead and give your discount a name. Um, I can apply this to either individually products, services, labor, or I can do it on the total, the event total. And then I can also do it on the total for the event, which is going to be after tax. So event is going to be before tax total, and then total is going to be after tax total. All right, we got a question that says, would the percentage for the labor fee automatically update as the product totals changes? So if you have it set as a percentage, then yes. So it's going to be 30% of whatever the product uh, total is. So um, as that total, the product total increases, so will the amount that 30% is. Um, but if you have it set to something that is a flat amount, then no, it's going to stay the same no matter what. Um, all right, so then discounts, we're going to apply that to the products here. Um, you can do this either evenly, taxable first or non-taxable first. And then, of course, again, flat amount or percentage. Same rules apply here, though. So if you do it as a flat amount, it's not going to adjust based on uh, the product total as it adjusts. Um, if you do it as a percentage, it will. All right. So um, that will show up in my discounts column here for me to utilize. I'm going to go ahead and save this again. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and save that. Again, that's going to save a new version for me to go back and forth to if I need to. Um, then I have my 4% admin fee here. So um, you can add an admin fee onto any worksheet from the options menu in the upper right hand corner, worksheet settings, and then we have our admin fee rate. It's a percentage based fee. Um, so in this case, I'm charging 4% on that. Um, and then it's going to add that onto uh, your total there. This is also where you're going to adjust your default markup. So uh, we do not go over this in this class, but um, when you go to go set up your company settings, you are going to set up your default markup there. But if for any reason you need to make changes for this specific person or this specific event, you can go into this default markup here and make that change. Um, another great feature here, and it's going to be a time-saving feature, is going to be templates. So earlier we talked about uh, my pretend fake five brides that are going to be coming in all with the same event. So if they're all going to be coming in with that same green and white wedding, I'm going to go to the save button at the bottom. And then instead of saving it as a new version, I'm going to save it as a new template. I'm going to name that template green and white wedding. I can put any description or tags or anything like that that I want to as a differentiator. And then I can go ahead and click save. Once I have that done, that means that I can use that template over and over again in any event moving forward. So when we talk about a template, that means it's going to save everything that I have on here. So all of my fees, all my services, all my uh, recipes, including their items, descriptions, costs, things like that are all going to be added onto this worksheet. So um, to load a template into a new event though, I'm gonna to go to the options menu at the top right. And then there's a load template button there. So I can load in any of my previously saved templates. Um, and last thing to look at before we move on from the worksheet is going to be from the design board under menu, we're gonna to go to items used and this is where we're going to be able to see all of our items that we use in this event. So uh, this is going to be your stem counter. So keeping in full bunches, making sure that I'm utilizing all of the product that I need um, and I'm not going to be ordering, you know, a bunch plus one stem. Um, so right here, I've got all of my different items. Anything that's in red means that I'm nowhere near a full bunch. Anything in green means that I am exactly on the money of a full bunch. Anything that is in gray, we don't have any gray items here, but anything that's in gray means that I'm within 20%. So if I have 10 stems to a bunch, 
that means I would have eight. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just open up this brassica dream. It's going to tell me how many I used total, how many bunches I'm going to need to order. In this case, uh, this is going to be not great at all since I'm only over by one. But because of that one stem, that means I need to order a whole nother bunch. So I can probably go into uh, my bride here. She's got four stems. If I click on my magnifying glass, it's going to take me directly to that recipe. I can expand it and then I can change that out, uh, you know, from four to three and then adjust that and it'll update that to now I'm green. So um, I would highly recommend checking this every time before uh, you leave your worksheet to go ahead and send that off. So that way you're making sure you're using full bunches or as close to a full bunch as you can possibly get. All right, so next we're going to go on to our financials and payments. I know we're getting a little bit close to time here. So in the payments area of uh, your event, this is where you're going to find your payment schedule. So um, we kind of talked about defaults before. Once you set your defaults, you're going to set your default payment schedule. And that's what will populate for every event moving forward. Right now, I have a um, retainer, a second payment, and a final payment. Um, maybe I just want to go ahead and do a retainer and a final payment. So any percentage-based payments that you have on this area will need to be 100%. So whether you have three, 12, any kind of number of payments, it's all going to just need to add up to 100%. And then of course you can also do flat amounts here as well. Um, like I said, it's gonna populate with your default payment schedule, but if you need to make any changes, add or subtract any specific payments, you can do this from that page. Right below that, we're gonna be able to record new payments here. So let's say I got my first one today. This is going to be retainer by check. And then I can go ahead and put in my amount and save. If you are utilizing our um, invoicing, which we can see here, um, those payments are going to automatically log on this page, so you won't need to manually log those. So this is just going to be in the case if you're using an external source or they pay by check or cash. So in the invoicing area here, this is where your invoicing will automatically be created. If you are not connected with our invoicing, I highly recommend that you check it out. Um, this will allow you to invoice your clients directly through details, accept payment through details, send an email or excuse me, send an invoice directly through details. Um, and then you'll also be able to customize these uh, emails that you see here when someone pays or when it's time for them to make a payment. On the left hand side, you're also going to be able to set up auto send, which means that you can choose for it to send the uh, invoice ready email either three days, one week or two weeks prior to the next billing date. Here's going to be your invoice link. So we're going to go ahead and click view on that so we can see exactly what that will look like. So your invoice is going to look very much like this. It'll of course have all of the different areas uh, of, from your worksheet in that specific event. It's going to attach your default contract terms. And then up at the top, we're gonna to be able to print this or pay. So when your client receives it, they can click print and print off a copy for themselves. And then they can click that pay button in order to pay uh, their next payment. So when they come to this screen, it's going to ask them which payment they want to pay. They can also choose to pay it all at once with the pay all button. Um, and then they'll enter in their email and credit card at that point. Last in financials is going to be our event terms. So um, you will have already set up your default contract terms. Um, if you guys are just getting started, then uh, every details account does come preloaded with a set of contract terms. Um, and those will automatically populate for each one of your events. 
if you need to make changes or add a specific clause for this particular client, you can do that here in the event terms. You can also remove or reorder any of these uh, from the screen as well. Next is going to be our proposal. So this is gonna be um, what you're gonna be sending off to your brides. Uh, this is gonna be a great way for us to utilize those <clears throat> event inspiration photos, and then also customize it exactly how we want our client to see it. So to get started, we have our proposal settings here at the top. First is gonna be your theme. Each account will start off with Blooming, Blossom, and Vanilla, um, and you can add additional templates as you go on from our details marketplace here. Um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and use that Blooming, but you can see there's a variety of different options here for you to choose from, so if you ever want to add any additional, you can. Then we have our footer here, which is going to be our client's name and then page number blank of blank. And we can align that as we see fit. You can adjust your fonts here on the proposal. You're going to have two different options. So the first is going to be your primary font. So if we click on that, you're going to be able to change out that font. So let me just go ahead and pick one. And then you're going to see a preview of what that font will look like here on the right hand side. You'll click done and that's going to update all of your different headers, or excuse me, your primary font. Then you have your secondary font, which will be all of your different headings. Again, you'll just go in, select a font, and then click done. And that's gonna update that for you as well. Um, your company information here is going to pre-populate with what you see right here. So it'll be your company name, your company address, phone number, email, um, and that's all going to be pulled from your company settings, which are located under your main menu, company, and then info. Um, but if you need to make any changes for a specific event, you can come here and adjust that as well. All right, so moving down here, we have our different areas for images. If you want to change an image, you'll simply click on the image itself. You can choose from your all inspiration, or you can click the choose from here in the top, click event inspiration, and then you can select the different photos that you have here, and then click out. You'll do the same thing for each one of these different photos that you want to adjust. And you can also do your favorite recipes, your favorite items, and things like that as you go on. Anything that you see that's in a red box can be changed. So uh, the client's names, proposal for, and then of course, another area for that client name. Next is gonna be our concept page. To move between the pages, you're gonna click on this current page drop down here, and then you'll just select the next page that you wanna go to. Um, on your conceptual design, you're going to be able to put your overall feeling or your concept description of this specific event. Um, and then, of course, your color palette is going to automatically populate here. And then you have some space to add additional event inspiration and floral inspirations as well. So for the floral inspirations, I'm going to go ahead and click on that photo. And I'm going to go to the choose from in the upper right hand corner and I'm going to use my favorite items. So these are going to be the items that I took the time to add onto my design board saying that I specifically wanted to use in this event. So I'm going to click on that particular flower and it will populate in that spot. Again, anything that's in red is something that you can change. So next we're going to have our design agreement page. This is going to be all of the information that we filled out on that initial first page about our locations and times, vendors that we're working with, and things like that. Next, we have our items, and these are going to be the items that were used in the recipes that we had on our worksheet. 
It's going to be sectioned out by uh, the different types of items. So it'll have all of your flowers or your florals, and then it will have all your vases, all your hard goods, um, all of your chairs, chargers, etc. If there are any one of these sections that you don't want to see, so maybe I don't have any on here, but maybe I don't want to see my hard goods. Um, I can go to the left hand side and find the hard goods category and change that to hidden. And I can do that for any one of the different sections. So, for example, my candles here in my miscellaneous, I can hide that and that's going to just remove the entire section. You can also change the headings for each section. So if blooms and stylings is not something that is in line with your brand and maybe you just want to put florals or um, things like that, you can go ahead and change that there. On the following page, we have our line items. So these are going to be your individual recipes. It will list out all of the information that you had there. So uh, descriptions, notes, uh, all of the items, your costs, anything like that will show here on this page. Um, depending on your company and how you like to do things, you may wish to hide or um, exclude some of these different areas. So for example, the, I, I had a lot of recipes that I didn't rename. So maybe I wanna hide that recipe name on the left-hand side here. You can also uh, hide anything like individual prices. So maybe I wanna, all my line item prices, I can go ahead and hide that. So anything that's on this page that you don't want to show to your client, you can certainly go ahead and hide that on the left hand side. Next is going to be our terms. So this will populate with your default uh, terms here or any changes that you may have made on the uh, event terms. Next, we have our breakdown page, which is going to uh, granularly break down all of the information from this event. So um, if you don't necessarily want to show an itemized version of everything that's going into this event, um, on the left-hand side, you can certainly choose to hide the entire page. If this is something that you do wanna show, but let's say we weren't offering a discount here, you can certainly hide the discounts column. So that way it doesn't show if you're not giving a discount. And then the final page is going to be our summary page. This will be our uh, brief overview of everything that's included in the event. It will have your payment schedule so that they know when they need to when they need to make those payments. It's also going to list out any payments they may have already made here in the payment section, as well as the outstanding balance. At the very bottom of this, there's going to be an area for company representative signature where you can click in and type in your name and then also select a date from that date selector. Once you have everything all finished, you're going to click on this save and publish button here at the top and that's going to create your PDF proposal. So one of the things that I always like to let people know is um, to always check your proposal PDFs. Even if you've looked at it 10 times here in this preview view, check your PDF. Um, the reason that I say this is it, you could have forgotten to save and publish. Maybe you, know, you, you look at this photo here and it looks great. And then you look at it with all of the other pages and you're like, oh, you know, I think that this photo might be better. Um, any of those things you can catch when you go to go see that PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and click that view button, which is what you're going to do. And that's going to bring you right to um, the PDF here, and uh, it'll show you the exact view that your client is going to see. So I would recommend coming in here, going through all of your different pages. Once you're done, this is what it's going to look like. So it'll have all of your different photos and your um, items there, your recipes, all of that information. This is what your proposal suggestion is gonna look like. It'll say available option, not included. Um, I hid my prices, but if we're showing our prices, it would show that um, suggested price there. So uh, that gives them the option to choose that specific option. 
And then moving down here at the very, very bottom, right where we signed, um, it's also going to have an area for your client signature. So when they get this, they're going to be able to click this accept and sign button here, enter their email address, and then enter their full name and sign that document electronically. Um, when they do that, it's going to send you an email to the email that you have listed in your company info section, and it's going to uh, alert you that that client has signed. Okay. Next, we're going to go over into our document section. This is going to be the documents for internal use. So the first one is going to be our executive PDF. It's a general breakdown of everything that's included in the event. Um, it's nice to print off if you guys do folders for your events. It's nice to add in there. Um, this is also an option to give to a client who maybe hasn't booked you yet and you don't want them to shop around your recipes. It's got pretty much all of the information that they need. Um, it also has that nice color palette and then their payment terms. Um, and all of their summary of expenses here. So next is going to be our recipe PDF. So this is where you'll see your recipes broken down. This is going to be for the designers that I have out there. So you'll print those off and everybody is going to be able to look at those and say, okay, for the bridal bouquet, we need one of those. And these are all of the items and quantities of those items that are included in that specific arrangement. Last is gonna be our delivery PDF. So this is going to be um, information about where everything needs to be delivered. It does have the event schedule on there. You'll then have your delivery checklist here, dropping off everything that needs to be dropped off. It's gonna have a client signature here so that they can confirm and say, hey, yes, I received everything um, that was on this list. And then at the end of the event, there's the pickup checklist for us to say, these are the items that need to be picked back up and then something for you, a member of your company to sign and say, yes, I confirm that we got every one of those items back. Any of these can be printed or downloaded in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. All right, and then we're gonna head on to our last page here, um, and then we'll open it up for any questions that we might have. So um, this is gonna be our cost page. So. On the cost page, this is going to be your order sheet, your pull sheet, if you will. So you're going to come in here and it's going to have all of the items that you need to complete this event. Um, it will list out the quantity needed, the estimated STEM cost, which is the STEM cost that you put on the worksheet itself, and then your estimated total for each one of those items. Um, at the top here, we do have our partnered wholesalers, which you can choose to order from. You'll click into any one of our partner wholesalers and um, a page like this will pop up. Um, for this, you can send select items to a wholesaler or you can send everything that you have to a wholesaler. Um, this box will pop up and you can select those certain items or you can click the check all at the bottom here and then add those items. It's gonna come up like this and you'll be able to adjust your quantities. Uh, so maybe, I don't know, it's eucalyptus, but let's just pretend that this is gonna come in a, a bunch of 10 stems per bunch and I've got 27. So maybe at this point, I'm gonna go in and say, okay, well, really I need 30. Um, and you can do that for any one of your different items. Same thing with your ask price per stem. So maybe my ask price is uh, $1.25 is what I know that spray rose to be, but I want to ask and see if I can get that for a dollar at 24 cents. Um, so this is, this is where you're going to be able to make those changes here. And then you can save and send that off to the wholesaler. Once you do that, you're going to get this activity log here that will tell you uh, each stage of the process, when the wholesaler looked at it, if they sent you back a quote, things like that. And you can also message that person back and forth. So um, this area here will allow you to say, hey, you know, looking for spray roses, but if you don't have those, I would really love to see if you have this and what the price is. Um, so anything you might wanna chat with your wholesaler about. Going back to the cost page here, this is um, kind of the stage where you would come in and say, okay, I've ordered my product, whether it be from in here, or if you have an external wholesaler, you can come in and download or print this table and send it off to the wholesaler that you already have. 
Um, so if that's the case, you can do that. And then you're going to come back in here and you're going to go in and put your actual quantity ordered and your actual stem cost. So this is becoming, I mean, not that it wasn't important before, but it's becoming increasingly more important because of the different changes in um, stem cost. So for example, if I'm coming in here in this brassica, I ordered six and I got that at 375 and everything's golden. But my carnation this week, um, I bought 12 and while it's normally running me 50 cents, it's now going to be running me a dollar. Um, and so you can go through and add these different items in here and adjust these costs and um, see at the end what you actually spent on all of these items. You also have this magic button here at the top. So if you were able to get everything that you ordered in the quantity and uh, STEM costs, you can auto fill all of these fields in. But once we do that, at the very bottom, it's going to tell us, okay, this is what we estimated our total to be on the worksheet when we charge this client. But this is what we actually spent, which was the 632.67. And then it's going to say, okay, this is how much you were under or over by. Um, the same thing here with the rentals, you're going to do that same thing and it will tell you your estimate actual and under or over. Um, and then when you do that, Let's say my carnation here, previously it was 50 cents, this week it's a dollar, but I'm consistently seeing that carnation now at a dollar per stem. I can go directly from this page into that item, go to the details page and make that change here to the default cost and make it $1. So that way, the next time that I use that flower, it's gonna be the most up-to-date price. Um, so just some kind of tidbits there. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and save this now. And that concludes our class today. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor for any questions. I know we are a little bit over, um, but if anybody has any specific questions or things that they want to go back over, now would be uh, the time to do so. And feel free, you can put it like in the chat or you can turn on your microphone if you want. All right, well, um, let's see. Please talk more about the use of the admin fee. Okay, what would you like to know about the admin fee? Like what its intended purpose is or like what situation you would use it in? Yes, okay, so um, the admin fee is, is an open-ended fee. Um, you know, it's an administrative fee, so it could really be anything that you want. Um, an administrative fee can be something as simple as, I went in here and I made your event in details, and that was an administrative duty that I've now um, gone in and Put in my four percent this is how much it's going to cost for the time that i spent here making this uh event uh, we also have people that use it in place of a convenience fee so your credit card fees right and um so you can add that in there in place of that as well but overall is an open-ended percentage-based fee so um you can add that in there any way that you'd like all right let's see uh, Lori, I will look into your question. Kaysen, two questions. I missed the first half, so sorry if you covered it. Are the items, mainly flowers, that are preloaded pre into details regularly updated with pricing as it changes in the industry? So um, yes and no. So they are all monitored by their specific um, owners, if you will. So like Jetfresh, I know they go in, every week, update those prices, they are extremely accurate. Um, then you have people that maybe update them uh, once a month, but all of those prices are going to be coming directly from the wholesaler themselves. So um, so yes. Is there a way to track when slash how much inventory is being used, aka an automated way to make sure an arch, arch rental is not being booked on the same date? No, but it is something that I have a ticket for. I'll add you to it, Jason. 
All right, you kept saying to click save, but I never caught where you were clicking. It could have been because the Zoom toolbar was at the bottom, possibly. So at the bottom, uh, the save button is always going to be at the bottom of the page. So, um, got it. Yes. So, uh, yes, the save button is right there. Okay, let's see. Is there a way to insert a date for when you print an updated version of proposal under header or footer? So, actually, you don't even need to do that because I will show you now. It automatically does it. This is actually something that a lot of people overlook, though. So, um, excellent question. But each time that you save and publish a new version, you know, on our side, we see that it has the different dates and times and things like that. But when we go to go view our proposal, it also says that for our clients. So, if I go onto the PDF and I'm going to scroll all the way down once it loads here. All right, so I'm going to go all the way down to the very bottom here. It's going to say last updated 727 2022. So it will say anytime the last updated version was. Um, so that way your client knows. Uh, how do I change the list of drop downs along the top of the screen when you add a new user? The list of drop downs. Um, I guess I need more clarification on that, Lori. How would I add mail payments to on the summary page of the proposal? Good question. So that's actually going to be part of your company defaults. So on the main menu under company, you're going to go to financials. And then you're going to see this payment settings area. So this is where you're going to put that make checks payable to information. Um, on the topic of that question, only because I've had it before, if you don't want to pay, make a make checks payable to section on your summary, you can just leave this section blank. All right, so just waiting on Lori there. Um, I didn't understand the question about the drop downs along the top of the screen when you add a new user. Um, all right, so we added a new user and none of the buttons across the top of the screen show up, i.e. details worksheet. Were you inside of an event? So, for example, if I go to the event list, yeah, Jen, you're welcome. All right, so if I go to my main event list, meaning that I'm not inside of an event, then the options that I get at the top are going to be different than they are if I'm inside of an event. So. For example, on the event list, I'm going to have things like marketplace, the support event list. And so that therefore I'm not going to be inside of an event. Same thing if I go to like my main menu and I go to resources here from the main menu and not inside of an actual event. Same thing, I'm not going to get those options. It's going to look like possibly I could be in an event because I'm in the item gallery, but I'm not. So um, I guess, Lori, if you go in and that client or excuse me, that user is not able to see anything across the top, make sure that they're inside of an event. If they are inside of an event and they are not seeing those options there, they may want to zoom out their screen. Small screens can diminish the um, navigation options that you have at the top. So uh, highly recommend trying that first. And if those two things don't work, let me know. We can look at it together. Any other questions? Yeah, thanks, Lori. Did, did you, it, this is Lori right now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Did you see the question about the financials? So when we often um, do the, the auto to send the invoice, it deselects. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was the one that I said I would follow back up with you oh, okay. on that. I'll have to go back and look. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have any questions before we end it out here? I know we covered a lot. All right. Well, as we're winding down, if anybody has any lingering questions, you can go ahead and put those in the chat. But um, I am going to finish up here today. 
Um, everyone is going to receive a follow-up email for attending. So you guys are going to get this full recap. So again, if there's anything that, um, you know, maybe you want to go over or anything like that, that we didn't um, already, feel free to reach out back out to me. But otherwise, if there's something that you wanted to just revisit that we went over today, it will be in that recap video. Um, so definitely just keep an eye out for your email. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to let everybody know that if you're not receiving our emails, that means you're probably not opted in and uh, you'll want to be because we have all kinds of stuff uh, going out about different things that we are doing, whether that be um, webinars like this or uh, upcoming events um, and also, of course, discounts and things that we do throughout the year. So. Highly recommend to opt back into our emails. If you um, want to learn more about that and you're not receiving our emails, feel free to just shoot me a uh, message. You can do a chat here if you want in the um, bottom left hand corner. Um, also, if you have questions after this that maybe you just don't want to go over right now or um, you think of later, that chat bubble is going to be a great option there for you to utilize as well. So. Uh, but I appreciate everybody for joining me today. I know that today was a little bit longer than our normal webinars, but I appreciate you sticking with me and I hope you learned a lot. So uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to reach back out. But otherwise, I hope that you all have a fabulous rest of your day and a wonderful rest of your week.